Hello and welcome to Upside Down. In today's tutorial I want to talk a little bit more about UVs inside 3ds Max. I want to show you some tips and tricks and as well to have an overview of what tools does the UVW map have. Let's start! I already created in the scene a very simple geometry that I'm going to be using today to show you some of the tools that the UVW map has. First let's select our mesh and apply a modifier which is called Unwrap UVW. Then let's open the UV editor and from where we are going to start is talking first about what does all these markings on our model mean. You can see that we have these green lines in some of the places and on other edges we don't have them. If some of your edges is marked by green, this means that there is a seam over there. You can see that at the moment our model has quite a lot of different seams. And this is something that we generally want to avoid because seams are going to be visible at the end result, especially if we are going to bake textures from a high poly. So let me show you a very quick trick how you can easily reset this and make it so that there are not that many seams. And after that we are going to cut the whole model from a clean UVs. I'm going to close our UV editor and convert everything to editable poly. And now we are first going to apply UVW map. I'm going to keep it on planner and now I'm going to convert it again to editable poly and open one more time unwrap UVW. This time once we open the editor you can see that first the UVs look in a different way but most importantly you don't see any of the green edges anymore. Now it's time for us to actually place where exactly we want to have our seams. But first I will just quickly go through our UV editor menu and where you can find different options that we have. On the very top we have our tools which are for selection, rotation and scale and as well our combined tool which allows you to do all these three things at the same time. Then as well we have a mirror. On the bottom you can see that we have different types of selections. We have vertices, edges and polygons. And as well we have another part which is element. Once we divided our object into different pieces we can use element to select different elements without the need of clicking one by one each of the pieces that create them. Also next to our selection elements we have grow and shrink. On the right side are pretty much most of the tools that we are going to be using. On the right side are the tools that we are going to be using on the right side are all the tools that we will be using. On the right side you can find all the tools that you will need to use while making your UVs. Today we are going to go through some of them and in the upcoming series I'm going to concentrate a little bit more about UVing and talking a little bit more about how you can use the tools to create the best results possible. As well we are going to talk about how to optimize our UVs and also packing for our textures so that our game projects are more optimized and we use more efficiently our texture space. Now let's start unwrapping our object. So first tool that we are gonna use is to tell where exactly we want our seam to be placed. When we have it selected, here on the side you can see that we have our modifier menu. So we are going to scroll down and there is a section called peel where there is a small box which says seams. These are few tools that we can use for placing our seams. First one we can just click on the edges and by clicking you can see that the edges are turning blue. This means that now 3ds Max is understanding that here we want to create a seam but it's still not executed and this one we can do it by clicking one by one manually all the places that we want to create our seams. As well by holding alt we can click one more time and remove all of the seams that we just placed. Second one is a point to point. It has the same result but much faster so I can click the initial edge from which we want to start and then I can go all the way to the other side and 3ds Max automatically will find the fastest path to place the seam. Of course at the end we can always go to edit seams and make adjustments if we think that we want to place the seams in a different way. We can turn off our seam edit tool and start unwrapping our object. I'm going to be on polygon selection and I'm going to select everything and after that again from the peel menu tools I'm going to select quick peel. You can see that now we already have our object peeled and everything already looks much better than it was in the very beginning. 
but we still have some warping here and there on the object, so we need to straighten up our UVs in order to get a better result once we create our bakes. There is, an also, there is also a very easy tool to use inside 3ds Max with which you can actually straighten your UVs and it's inside the reshape elements. The very first tool is called straighten selection. By clicking it, you can see that now I've straightened my UVs and everything now looks good. Only thing that is left for us to do is actually to place our UVs inside our UV island. And of course, it's something that we can do easily by hand. But if you're having a lot of other elements and you want to pack everything very quickly, or you just want everything to be packed nicely so that nothing goes out of your UV island, there is a tool for this as well. I will scroll down and there is a section called Arrange Elements. Here we have a few different options that we can use quickly to arrange our elements inside our UV island. So I'm going to use one which is from the default settings by clicking the first button which says Pack Custom. And you can see that it automatically placed our UVs perfectly inside the UV island all the way from one side to the other side. I'm now going to show you how you can pack if you have a couple of different objects by just cloning this one and then attaching everything and applying again UVW map and after that regrouping everything all together. I'm going to convert it to editable poly, hold shift and clone this two times. I'll select the first one and click attach, attach the other two and now we are going to place again unwrap UVW, I'm going to open the UV editor, at the moment you can see that our UVs for all the three objects are stacked on top of each other, but if I come again to arrange elements and click custom you can see that it will put the three elements on top of each other with some small separation in between. If we want to customize the result of how much space is between those elements, we can do this by the settings on the side. So here you can see that there is a padding. So if I make the number smaller, we can decrease the space in between those elements. Another tool which is very useful while you are doing your UVs is of course checking the checker and pattern on your models. You can turn it on on your models by going on the drop down menu over here and then clicking on check and pattern. Now it's visualized in your viewport and you can easily see if there are any mistakes or warps in your UVs. We can easily see that now we have a issue over here and by looking into our UVs we can exactly see what is the issue. We can now move our selection to vertices. I can select all the vertices and move them so that they have the same distance as the other ones. You can still see that there is a difference between the size of the squares from this side and the other side. This is because our UVs are not aligned in the middle and we again can select all the vertices and just move them so that they are in the middle. If we want to further improve and make the size of our squares on the checker and pattern even better, we can edit the space in between our vertices by using our freeform tool. So now that I have everything selected, I can come to one of the corners, hold shift and extend it on the side. After that, we can easily come here and move it so that it's again aligned in the middle. And now you can already see that we have a little bit better distribution of our squares. Thank you for joining me in today's tutorial. I hope that this video was useful and helpful for you. Leave a like and a comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe to my channel to follow more tutorials for 3D artists. Thank you for joining me today. See you next time.